Okay guys, sorry, so I just have that board out there and we're going to be having a look at, um, I just want to kind of talk you through these notes just so that they make sense, um, just in case I don't hear from you guys again, but just kind of talk you through these notes of the opinion piece um, and then we're going to have a look at this whole idea of la salud and then have a look at a sample answer as well just to kind of tie the whole thing up together. Okay, so if we look at our opinion piece notes, we start on the inside and this is just the kind of first thing I want to show you. So like we were just talking about there, this whole idea of what you can do no matter what comes up for your introduction, okay? So we had um, like our opinion piece phrase and then we had, okay, like I'm going to talk about this, whatever. Maybe if you've already done this in fifth year already and you kind of want to take your answer to the next level, I want to show you on the first page there, you've got kind of like two little quotes. I'm just going to kind of show you how to actually work one of those quotes in just to kind of give you an idea so that you're not just throwing it at the examiner. So what I have here, um, there's two little quotes and both of them are by a poet, um, very, very, very famous Spanish poet called Federico García Lorca. Um, and basically Lorca was a Spanish poet who was assassinated during the Spanish Civil War. Um, he did an awful lot of work for like the marginalized people in society at the time. So like homosexuals and um, people who were um, of a different race, people who maybe identified with a I suppose kind of a not normal for the time gender identity um, like people who were members of like the traveling community anything like that he did an awful lot of work for them and he was assassinated during the war um, but basically he is like the equivalent of like if I said Lorca to a Spanish person it'd be like the equivalent of saying like Shakespeare to someone who speaks English that like you don't even need to really know his first name like it's known who he is but I want to actually just focus on the first quote here and we have here so más vale una verdad que duela so truth that hurts is worth more than a lie that deludes, okay? So why in God's name am I telling you to, to use that, right? So like, I'm just going to show you how, um, let's say, like, kind of how to incorporate it. So let's say for argument's sake, if I was to just think of a topic off the top of my head, um, let's say if our title was something like, um, let's say, so actually we'll take the topic we're going to look at. Um, later on. So, la salud mental. No es tan importante. Como la salud física. Okay, so this is the sample answer we're going to be having a look at later, right? So, the title is Mental Health is Not as Important as Physical Health. That is not my opinion. If anything, I think it's more important. Um, but that's just something that I would look at. I do this opinion piece with my grad students every year. I actually do it quite early on in the year just because I think it's something to really kind of, people get very hyped up about it and it's a great way to actually find out people's opinions and make them want to express themselves. So if I was going to like follow that structure I just gave you for an, uh, an introduction and show you how to incorporate this quote for this title, let's have a look. Okay, so I might say, um, right, let's just say I, I'm against this, right? So I want to say it is as important. So estoy um, totalmente en contra de esta afirmación. Okay, so I'm completely against this statement. Okay, so I'm saying mental health is as important as physical health. Okay, so completely against this statement. Then how am I going to tie the quote in? So I'm going to say en cuanto as soon as I saw it, en cuanto la vi. So that word la means it, and it's referring back to that word afirmación. If a word in Spanish ends in ION, it's going to be feminine, okay? So that's why I'm saying as soon as I saw it, en cuanto la vi, pensé, I thought, and then again, I'm going to use that preposition en after the verb pensar. So pensé en la frase, Famosa de Lorca. Más vale una verdad que duela. Que una mentira. Que ilusión. So I completely am against this statement. As soon as I saw it, I thought of the famous quote by Lorca. And then there's a quote, a truth that hurts is worth more than a lie that deludes. I can't just throw that into my answer without it making any sense. So I need to tell the examiner 
why it is that I'm using this quote. So the easiest way to do that is hit off this word la verdad. So hoy en día. So nowadays. La verdad es que. And then this is the bit that I would change, okay? So um, like obviously based on your opinion, that bit could change as well. Um, but the next bit then is trying to relate back into the title. So I want to say something about mental health and physical health. So nowadays, the truth is that la verdad es que mucha gente no entiende la importancia de la salud mental. So nowadays, truth is that, so this truth that hurts, this truth is that many people don't understand the importance of mental health. And then I would use that quote, so para, or not that quote, sorry, that sentence from our last section, so para compartir mis pensamientos voy a hablar de Whatever. So in order to share my thoughts, I'm going to speak about and then whatever it is that you would use. So that's just to kind of show you how to tie that quote in because there's no point just writing it down and thinking that the examiner's going to be like, wow, they've used a longer quote. It needs to make sense, okay? Um, so just for that to make sense then from your notes. So what we've got, so on the first couple of pages of those notes, kind of the same idea as what we're looking at in the first section, just some ideas that you can use no matter what comes up, um, just different ideas, that kind of thing, different ways to structure your answer. So we don't need to have a look through those couple of pages and um, then on the next page you've got a couple of different like planning templates right this is just to kind of get the ball rolling for yourself if you're trying to do something um to kind of get yourself back into mentality of senior self Spanish I suppose um but on page four so we've got another opinion piece topic that I love doing with six years kind of at the beginning of the year because again it's one of these things that people have an opinion on um in English so it's trying to kind of get them to express that in Spanish so the title is I que ir a la universidad para encontrar un buen trabajo. So you need to go to university in order to get a good job. So underneath that I've said, I've said there in English, so what is this question really asking you to do? So actually what you would have to do for that question is to tell me what you think a good job is. So do you think a good job, like how do you define a good job? Do you think a good job is one that um, earns loads of money? Or do you think a good job is being a doctor? And obviously then if that's what your idea of a good job, so like if you're like a good job to me is that you, you're a doctor, I would hope that you have to go to university to become a doctor. If not, I'm worried. Um, but like, let's say hypothetically you said a good job is a job that gives you happiness. Then you don't necessarily have to go to university to get a job that gives you happiness. You know, you might could, you could do a course, you could do an apprenticeship, um, anything like that. So it's kind of, you have to think about it in that sense. Um, then underneath it, I said, like, could you bring other topics into it? And that's something that like, I really focus on throughout the year in Grinds. It's like really trying to get people to be savvy that like, say if you really love talking about health, what other topics can you bring health into so that like you're, I suppose, like you're getting more value for your money when you're learning one topic that you're not just learning it to talk about that one topic individually, that you learn what its connections are to other themes as well. And then at the end, then I've said this, so why are you going to college? AKA, what's your opinion of it? What's going to be your connection to this topic? Um, so I've just kind of left you a couple of different planning templates starting on page four. Then on page five, again, kind of thinking of university still, so la universidad y el mundo de trabajo. Again, just to kind of give you some insight into how we plan these things throughout the year. So like you've got like the advantages of going to college, the disadvantages, and then a good job. So like that's something that we would work through um, in a 75 minute class up here and then have a look through a sample answer, figure out how, um, like what's going to be the easiest way, the most effective way for you guys to write an answer for that kind of topic. Um, and then we go through things like problems in the world of work and problems in the world of university, all that kind of stuff. Um, then starting on page six, you've got a sample answer for that title, so you need to go to university to get a good job. Like I was saying, you'll get a full booklet for your grinds of all of these kind of sample answers, all broken up into different points and everything. And um, for those of you that maybe have no idea what an opinion piece should look like, I tend to see as an examiner, um, most students will kind of write in and around an A4 page worth of stuff. Like it won't be always that long or might sometimes be a little bit longer. It doesn't matter how long your answer is, but it must stay relevant. There's no point writing two pages worth of Spanish that's perfect if it's not relevant to the title and there's no point writing this much relevant Spanish and thinking you're gonna get the same grade as someone who's written an A4 page of relevant Spanish, do you know? So you kind of have to find that balance. 
Um, but these, the two sample answers that are in these notes are both too long. All you need to do is pick two out of those three points and Bob's your uncle, you're sorted. That's just for you guys to see as much of the vocab being used as possible. Um, and like, let's say for argument's sake, you need to use one of these points throughout the year in a different topic for yourself that you can just look at the point individually instead of having to pick out pieces from different parts of an answer. Okay, then if we move forward, then on pages eight and nine, you've got a comprehension that I would work through with that opinion piece topic as well. Um, but the main thing that I want to kind of talk you guys through starts in the numero. Okay, so I'm starting on page 12. So you'll see this is kind of like, like I said, so it says theme six, the beginning of it. I would cover kind of eight really big themes throughout the year um, for the opinion piece. And a lot of them will work into your oral exam as well for the kind of more abstract stuff. Um, but this will be the structure that they will follow in the notes. So you'll have charts of vocab all relating specifically to that theme. Um, and then you'll see starting on page 13 then you've got little proverbs, you've got sayings, you've got sentences and facts and statistics and stuff that you can use for that topic as well and that's such a good way of like boosting your idiomatic language, getting really strong marks for like content as well as your language, you know that like it's relevant, it answers the question but it also does something linguistically that maybe not every student is going to do. Um, but what I want to really focus on um, and also, sorry, just to mark it for you guys, starting on page 16, there's an article about Tess Holliday, who was one of the first plus-size models to be on the cover of Cosmopolitan magazine. Um, but I will try to do that for the majority of your opinion piece topics as well, as get you some sort of like what we call an original text. Um, so that's like a text that's designed for native speakers. So you can see kind of that language being used by someone whose first language is Spanish. So I definitely have a read through that. It's not from the Leaving Cert syllabus, it's just a magazine article. Um, but it's a really nice way of seeing kind of the topic being used itself. Okay, but we're not backing at the FU, just on, on page 18, this is what I really want to be focusing on for this little section here. So we're going to be having a look at um, that opinion piece title. So, la salud mental no es tan importante como la salud física. So mental health is not as important as physical health. Okay, so again, this is actually a sample answer that I worked through with one of my students, um, not last year, the year before, and she got 50 out of 50, okay? Um, there might be a couple of little typos from me just transcribing it, so if there are, I'll let you know. Hopefully there's not just on the off chance there is, you might need to have a little pen or pencil at the ready. What I'm going to do, I'm going to read each part individually and then I'm going to translate it for you as we go so that, if, again, if you need to just scribble anything down, don't be afraid to pause um, to, just to get me to shut up for 10 seconds so you can write the word above it, okay? So again, the title is Mental Health is Not As, as Important as Physical Health. It's our introduction. So, esta opinión provocó muchos pensamientos mixtos en mí. No se puede valer un tipo de salud más que el otro. En cuanto vi esta afirmación, pensé en la frase famosa de Federico García Lorca, más vale una verdad que duela que una mentira que ilusione. Hoy en día, la verdad es que existen miles de personas que padecen una enfermedad mental y es crítico que la gente sepa la importancia de cuidar la salud mental tanto como la salud física. Voy a hablar de los, temo, de los temas de los medios sociales, los beneficios del ejercicio físico y de cómo los dos tipos de salud se complementan. Okay, so our introduction. So again, this is quite a long introduction, but just kind of giving you some insight into maybe things that might be a little bit more advanced, a little bit more complex. So this opinion provokes, that's our past tense there, that's our pretérito indefinido, provokes a lot of mixed thoughts in me. You cannot, or it's not possible, no se puede, it's like it's not possible. So you can't value one type of health more than the other. As soon as I saw this statement, I thought of the famous quote by Federico García Lorca, a truth that hurts is worth more than a lie that deludes. Nowadays, the truth is that there are thousands of people that exist that suffer from a mental illness, so una enfermedad is an illness, and it is critical that people know the importance of minding your mental health just as much as your physical health. I'm going to speak about the themes of social media, the benefits of physical exercise, and of how the two types of health complement each other or kind of like rely on each other. So our first point then is on social media. So la cruda realidad del mundo moderno es que la gente pasa un montón de horas en los medios sociales, con los adolescentes pasando unas 5 horas por día en las redes sociales como Instagram y Facebook. Se puede conectar la salud con los medios sociales por los efectos que estas redes tienen en la salud mental de la gente de hoy. Okay, so I'm going to just translate it up to there because it's quite a long point. So la cruda realidad is a gorgeous little phrase to learn, okay, and it's literally three words. It's like the harsh reality or the ugly truth. So the ugly truth of the modern world is that people spend a ton, un montón de is a ton of, so a ton of hours on social media, 
with teenagers spending some five hours and if, like that if you put the word like unos or unas in front of a number it's like kind of the equivalent of saying like ish it's like five-ish hours so some five hours or five-ish hours per day on social networks like instagram and facebook you can connect health with social media through the effects so poor can mean through through the effects that these networks have on the mental health of people today estos medios están llenos de imágenes de gente guapa, con cuerpos perfectos y vidas casi inalcanzables. Son estas imágenes que perjudican la salud mental de mucha gente. Tanto así que el BBC ha contado que la cantidad de personas con depresión ha aumentado de una forma alarmante a causa de sentimientos de inutilidad por haber pasado demasiado tiempo en los medios sociales. Ok, so again, it's a really long sentence here. So what I've got is, so these media, so estos medios, these media are full, lleno is full, of images of pretty people with perfect bodies and almost unattainable, inalcanzables means unattainable, lives. Son estas imágenes, it is these images that harm, perjudicar, that's actually a really handy verb to have, I'll even write up the name of that verb for you, so. So perjudicar is the verb to harm. Um, a synonym for it that's a little bit easier to spell, a little bit easier to pronounce is dañar. Okay, you could also say hacer daño. And that is the verb to do damage. So I would think this is probably the easiest one. This is a little bit more advanced, but just if you want to write a couple of them down just to have them for reference, okay? But it is these images that harm the mental health of many people. Tanto a CK, so much so that the BBC has reported, contar is the verb to report. The BBC has reported that the amount of people with depression has increased in an alarming way. Due to, a causa de is like due to or as a result of, sentimientos de inutilidad, feelings of uselessness, after having spent too much time on social media. Si pasamos una tan grande cantidad de horas en estos medios, debemos dar cuenta del poder que tienen en nuestra salud mental y de la importancia que la salud mental tiene. Sin tener buena salud mental, la vida puede ser más difícil, entonces la salud física pierde su valor también. ¿Cómo se puede decir que un tipo vale más que el otro? So if we spend such a big amount of, or such a big quantity of hours on social media, we need to realize, okay, so to realize in Spanish is dar cuenta de... So we need to realize the power, el poder is the power, that they have on our mental health and of the importance that mental health has. Without having good mental health, life can be more difficult. And so, y entonces, it's like and so or thus, and so physical health loses its value as well. How can you say that one type is worth more than the other? Again, coming back to the title kind of at the end of each of our points to get that idea of like being relevant the whole way through our answer across. Okay, so our second point then. So, como he dicho arriba, pasamos un montón de horas en los medios sociales, encadenados al ordenador o al móvil, y la vida es cada vez más sedentaria. Hacer ejercicio es imprescindible para mantener buena salud física y mental. Es claro que el ejercicio puede ayudar en la búsqueda de un cuerpo más sano, pero también es muy valioso en mantener buena salud mental. Cuando se hace ejercicio, el cerebro emite endorfinas y se siente más contento. Esos sentimientos de felicidad pueden tener un gran impacto positivo en el sentido general del bienestar, lo que puede bien afectar la salud mental. En este mundo moderno, lleno de gente llevando una vida tan sedentaria, hay que practicar más ejercicio para que la salud en general pueda mejorar. So, as I've said above, como he dicho arriba, above es arriba, we spend a ton of hours on social media chained, encadenados like chained or hooked on um, our computer or our phone, and life is more and more sedentary. Okay, we spend more and more time sitting down. So, cada vez más. It's more and more. Doing exercise is essential, imprescindible, is like essential or really, really necessary in order to maintain good physical and mental health. It's clear that exercise can help in the search for a healthier body 
but it was also really valuable in maintaining good mental health. When you do exercise, your brain emits endorphins and it feels happier. These feelings of happiness can have a big positive impact on your general sense of well-being, el bienestar is well-being, which can affect your mental health in a good way. In this modern world, full of people living such a sedentary life, you need to practice more exercise so that your health in general can improve. And then our last point then, we'll finish up that conclusion and then we'll move on to our diary entry for 10 or 15 minutes. So it's claro que se puede hacer ejercicio pasar menos tiempo en Instagram o Facebook, pero hay que saber por qué. Sin tener buena salud mental, se llega a ser más difícil llevar una vida físicamente sana porque el cerebro no tiene la motivación ni la energía de pensar. No importa hacer deporte o algo así. Del mismo modo, el cerebro muy a menudo necesita las endorfinas que vienen con ser activo para mantener un buen nivel de felicidad y bienestar mental. Pues, es obvio que los dos tipos de salud se complementan. So it's clear that um, you can do exercise or spend less time on Instagram or Facebook, but you need to know why. Hay que saber por qué. Without having good mental health, it can become more difficult to lead a physically healthy life because your brain doesn't have the motivation or the energy to think. No importa es like let alone. So let alone doing sports or something like that. So así, so a s i acento significa like this or like that. Similarly, del mismo modo, similarly, your brain very often needs the endorphins that come with being active in order to maintain a good level of happiness and mental well-being. So it's obvious that the two types of health complement each other. And then our conclusion. So en totalidad, so to conclude, no se puede negar, negar is the verb to deny. You cannot deny la importancia ni el poder de la salud mental o la salud física. En mi opinión, el bienestar total es lo más importante y hay que darse cuenta de lo que se hace en la vida para mantener los dos. Si tuviera la oportunidad, me gustaría hablar con las generaciones siguientes para que puedan aprender que la salud es algo multidimensional y que llevar una vida sana es llevar una vida feliz. So to conclude, you cannot deny the importance or the power of mental or physical health. In my opinion, total well-being, so el bienestar total, total well-being is the most important thing. You need to realize what you do in your life in order to maintain the two. If I had the opportunity, I would like to speak with the next generation, las generaciones siguientes, so that they can understand that health is something that's multidimensional and that leading a healthy life is leading a happy life. And I swear to God, that line is like my job. Like, that is just like, if I was your examiner, I'd be like, just take the H1 now. Just have it. Like, I don't even want it anymore, okay? But it's just such a good way of like ending with something that's a little bit different but is so relevant to the title and getting that kind of like idiomatic language across but also communicating your points really well okay so i know that's probably like especially if you're looking at this going into fifth year probably like um have you any more jokes because there's no way that that's happening trust me on this no one's expecting you to be able to do this yet okay that's to just give you some insight into maybe what some students could be capable of doing going into the leaving cert exam okay but please don't be too intimidated by it yet Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to drop the pinky piece there and we're going to have a look at your diary entry for the last few minutes of this and we'll end on something that maybe isn't as terrifying as that. Um, so I will see you in a couple of seconds. I'm going to go prep your board for you and go chill out for a few minutes after that horrific few minutes there. <laughs>